Welcome to another Robot Adventures Review. Come by children, dumbasses, shit for brains, stupid people. <laughs> Don't watch this Republican. Republicans. Don't watch this video. This video isn't meant for you. This video is meant for people who like my video. Come back. Hello, don't let Ruben from Robot Adventures scare you. Hello, this is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with the fourth trip to Japan done via this uh, YouTube channel. There's a whole vlog, some standalone individual events and uh, new content products kits purchased. Uh, the idea was to take a break from uh, work uh, after neglecting this channel for so long and building up some interesting uh, content, doing some shopping for myself and most importantly uh, picking up some stock for the business I've uh, started to sell some rare and unusual kits as well as reselling goods from Wonder Festival. A garage kit doll uh, modelling sales event that I've always been wanting to go to. Uh, a lot of these events are going to be broken up into their own individual videos, though the majority of this vlog is what I've got up to in Japan, how I feel about some of the places, some of the shopping I've done, not so much a shopping guide as those are definitely been done to death as well as my channel displaying that sort of content. Just something a bit fun that I've uh, come across and more rare obscure aspects of the scale modeling hobby as well as other elements of Japanese pop culture. My aim was to have a fairly cheap budget trip relying off the experience I've had from previous trips, not wanting to spend any more than 3000 including flights, accommodation, spending money and a bit more for reselling in stock and bringing it back as checked luggage in large bags. I landed in Tokyo and went straight to Akihabara past 2 in the morning due to very cheap flights and my hotel uh, cancelling my booking and the next one not allowing past midnight in. It was a perfect opportunity to try one of these uh, manga cafes. Walking around Akihabara is uh, very creepy with the uh, maid and uh, adult services being uh, advertised, uh, especially the uh, VR, AV services and uh, private booths. I did find a legitimate uh, manga cafe, which uh, gave me my own uh, little booth, uh, still evidence that's a uh, fat den, though fair amounts of reading material, free soup, drink, all that sort of thing. A nice way to uh, nap and relax before carrying on with my next day one item off the bucket list at least. The next day I made my way to Asakusa and did this by foot from Akihabara station onwards to find my hostel. The way of transport I'm just catching Subway and JR as usual. I'm only going to be staying within uh, two localized cities Tokyo and Osaka. Uh, transporting between them by the bullet train the Shinkansen with a $200 fare rather than getting the JR pass. I've uh, checked out a lot of regional areas and touristy stuff in uh, past endeavors. Once uh, there, the uh, major hostels I've looked at uh, only focused around the $20 to $30 a night. In uh, Tokyo, I stayed in a mixed share room, which most of the time I had the place to myself, the eight uh, bunk room or there was one or two uh, very quiet uh, people staying there. Uh, there is sometimes uh, issues you come across in shared accommodation with other people's uh, BO, sleeping, talking too much. Uh, the thing I hate is when people have a heater on overnight while sleeping. But it is what it is uh, to just get by when you're in the city for a very short period of time. My goal is to run through the major hobby zones. Uh, we're going to break into the section, second part of Akihabara and the third part of uh, Nakano uh, Broadway. Individual video will be made on Gundam Front and the event I attended wonder festival. We'll touch on some of the uh, other stuff of interest around Tokyo. Uh, for more long-term accommodation 
I went to uh, Osaka, which I had a room all to myself for under 2,000 yen in an area called Shinomamiya. Uh, that was quite lucky and uh, enjoyable. Around the uh, Asakusa area that night, I uh, checked out the uh, large shrine, and there was a Don Quixote uh, mass discount variety store. It had a few uh, elements of uh, a toy section, a few Gundam kits. Uh, a lot of people are always uh, rushed and excited to buy uh, your standard Gunpla Bandai models while in Japan, but you're going to be tripping over them as you would uh, rocks and sand at a beach or desert. It's all over Japan and uh, when you're traveling it's a better opportunity to explore other brands and type of uh, mecha or model kits and uh, more importantly uh, acquire tools. If you're a Gunpla and Gunpla only person that's where you'd probably be more interested in stuff that's uh, out of production or uh, your limited uh, brand crossovers or P Bandai kits. One of my days in Tokyo, I met up with an Australian expat and former hobby shop employee. Happily enough, on a national holiday flag or foundation day, he took me to the war criminal shrine known as uh, Yashikuni Shrine, which I've uh, visited numerous occasions. It's uh, very controversial and not willing to get into the politics on the channel, but interestingly enough, due to the museum and uh, former Second World War uh, weapons uh, on display. Being this day, there's a lot of people uh, honouring uh, the war dead and uh, carrying on in all sorts of uh, interesting um, displays and uh, fashions, including this uh, speech by this gentleman. And I have taken a photo with uh, Mitsubishi Zero. The gift shops are interesting if you're in the military side of things of uh, old Japanese themed uh, kits or memorabilia from the Imperial Japanese Army. Not far by train in Shibuya, uh, famous for uh, fashion, trendy youth area. It's got the large famous crossing and the Hachiko dog statue. Once you go down the uh, guts of the neighbourhood from the uh, crossing straight and past the police box, it's easy to get lost around there, but it's fascinating to walk around. There's a Disney and Marvel shop out there. You'll find a very large Mandarake second-hand uh, pop culture store, and we'll talk more about it in the uh, other cities and hobby shops around the place. This place is uh, famous for anime goods, uh, comics, some of it of uh, adult nature, costuming, all that sort of thing. It will have a small toy section, and in a small isolated area, you'll find uh, model kits. And this one will have a build-up of uh, older stuff, uh, Zoids, resin kits, all that sort of thing. Did uh, pick up a couple of goodies and it is a must visit for me when in Tokyo. I do love the uh, aesthetics of these uh, secondhand recycling stores that people go to sell their collection or liquidate. It's a big inspiration this chain for uh, the business that I'm trying to conduct in Australia. Heading back to Asakusa and one advantage to being so close to Akihabara it closes very late around 10 p.m and you can do extra exploring once you've done your activity or event of the year. Uh, one of the traditions many people like to do is buy a Gashapon uh, toy ball. Something I don't partake every day, but couldn't help myself to have this classic ball kit, which I'll build at some point with the Zaku and Gundam heads. Akihabara, known as the electric city in Tokyo, Japan, started off as a trading point pseudo black market after the war is multiple city blocks around the train station of the same name selling electrical goods and a lot of different uh, media in the way of uh, entertainment hobbies that sort of thing heavily leans on animation and it's very well known does not need uh, much of an introduction to most of us but the idea of visiting it and being oversaturated in pop culture image of uh, animation, mecha, video games, uh, being constantly bombarded with um, advertisement and imagery of we, what we like, does immerse us in a world where we're just uh, intoxicated and overwhelmed with uh, everything. It's almost like a pilgrimage to uh, visit and get some sort of uh, spiritual uh, 
inspiration in what you like buying looking for the right thing and interconnecting and meeting people that are into the same thing uh, a must visit if you are heading to Japan and it's absolutely immense and huge uh, however it is touristy and overly uh, marketed and controlled by the uh, larger chains businesses sponsors corporations that sort of thing it's also heavily frequented by scalpers who buy things up very early that's uh, limited and high in demands to uh, resell or collect immediately around uh, Akihabara if we were to be shopping for model kits in Gundam um, you'll find it immensely everywhere the first place you'll bump into is uh, Yodobashi camera a large electrical department store and in the top section is uh, the hobby department toys model kits and everything's wrapped in a enclosed space near the escalator and you're gonna find everything probably at a base standard uh, price and the largest range of uh, kits tools all that sort of thing in the uh, city immediately and this is where I'd like to uh, use it as my standardization of a decent hobby shop for the area when you're comparing to uh, other shops that you may be uh, visiting especially if you do want to buy uh, consumable products like uh, paints or hobby knives airbrushes that sort of thing excellent to start off with if you're after uh, model kits particularly uh, your Gundams or mechanized uh, type subjects you got bit camera that's uh, not too far away and that's generally cheaper but more of a limited range and heavier on uh, toys does have some uh, hobby goods I don't really bother with it with whatever I want I'm more likely to buy it secondhand even cheaper than that and don't think it's worth looking in if you do intend to visit Yedabashi and the uh, Ami Ami uh, physical store location which has a mix of uh, secondhand that's worth looking at and uh, the newest products some more obscure that just hits the market if you dwell outside of uh, Gunpla and more into rarer subjects, military, trains, cars, that sort of thing, Yedabashi is a must. Once we're dwelling outside of uh, the train station, and if you only have a limited amount of time to uh, visit Japan or Akihabara a day, several hours, you really need to invest in a map, which they do give out uh, in the area, probably download prior and mark off where you want to visit there is quite a few very worthwhile uh, stores and uh, specialty stores that we're going to go down with uh, the list that I uh, have and you can most likely find a treasure that you will uh, thoroughly enjoy and bring back as a trophy a holy site for uh, animation and mostly uh, hobbies of all types especially modeling is the radio Kaikan building near the train station and the noticeable stores that you'll find in there going up and down the escalator. The building's not particularly big but high would be the Kyoto, the guys who do the Mushin Krieger who currently did a massive SLA 3D printing uh, display and items that they're selling in very very small limited batches. Some event exclusives as Wonderfest was just over. Uh, the Volks shop now Volks is amazing for a lot of products on display of uh, built kits and models built by very talented artisans uh, hobbyists artists and sometimes uh, magazine professionals and it gives you a chance to have a look at uh, the runners and uh, different type of built models from different genres of models and many different products such as airbrushes paints and different products on display and even little posters and pamphlets explaining how more obscure and stranger items can be handled and used uh, people who frequent this shop would be uh, more higher tier and seasoned modelers who are happy to pay a higher price but get something that's uh, harder to get or more refined in the hobby definitely a favor for mine and I love looking at all the finished models if we uh, compare back to Yodobashi they'll have many of the Gundam kits snapped and a few painted uh, items commissioned by a modeling artist 
Another beautiful thing about Volks is they will import things from overseas and other manufacturers to tell, sell to the Japanese market or stuff that's very hard to get out of certain countries like Eastern Europe, Korea, um, Western Europe with uh, figure painting stuff. It's very expensive but it's a great way of sourcing it safely. An absolute must. Yellow Submarine, that's a large store of um, quite a bit of secondhand uh, goods. You can pick up some kits, sometimes it's special, very cheap around the Zoids, Macross, Code of stuff. And they also sell kits that are built or junked or kit parts, which are normally very expensive and uh, worth avoiding. You're better off buying the kit secondhand from more junk shops that will cover. And final, Jungle, a premium secondhand uh, dealer similar to Mandarake where you can get a lot of garage kits and very rare models also around toys. There are smaller stores in between as well as other things covering other hobbies, uh, dolls, airsoft, that sort of thing. Not far in the back blocks across the road from the train station of the main street is Mandarake and that's uh, known as the famous and the biggest toy reseller, recycler, second-hand uh, dealer of all things that are hobby, animation, pop culture. In the first two floors you'll find the uh, hobby section which will have very rare kits, items, resin models behind glass cabinets. Normally very expensive, a few bargains can be found in their junkier bargain bins on the floor but very worthwhile checking out if you like older models or you're looking for something that was an event exclusive or limited that you never got your hands on and might appear there. Other uh, premium secondhand dealers worth looking out on the main street would be uh, Golden Age, more toys but very rare kits, Suragui Special in a side street near the train station, a massive favourite of mine is they always have something cool that I got to pick up and a hobby off probably uh, the cheapest of the secondhand dealers. Many manufacturers and brands will also have showrooms that are worth looking at their uh, products and uh, buying stuff that's only from their catalogue or where they have a complete catalogue. Sometimes at a discounted rate. Uh, Plum is a lesser known small batch manufacturer in Japan that focuses on video game subjects and figures, figurative toys and model kits. Very very high quality. Their stuff tends to be a bit expensive but it's just a treasure that other people don't build or talk about enough. The Kota Pekir showroom, it's a bit disappointing unless you're into toys and uh, figures. The model kits are a bit meh and uh, you can do a lot better in Yodobashi and other stores. And uh, Tam Tam, that's more military, hobby tools, kits, uh, trains. Very similar mix between Volks and Yodobashi and gives you a bit of an alternative. One of my, what's close to me and I love the most is the junk shops, smaller, lesser known shops that no one visits that are in the top of our buildings, up dodgy stairways, the back blocks and they'll have these uh, tubs and buckets outside the front of the shop or on the floor in the aisles just filled with damaged boxes, small toys and if you have a dig you'll find plastic bags of uh, runners or a garage kit that's unlabeled and they'll give you no guarantees but a couple of times I found a well-known sculptor or an exclusive kit that's uh, just been handed from bag to bag so often that it's unidentifiable by that shop and you can just get a crazy bargain. These it's harder to research but if you have a long time and uh, tons of time to just go through Akihabara you can just dig through there and find all sorts of uh, bargains and very cool treasures. Uh, touristy stuff to just outright avoid unless you must is things like May Cafes, it's a role play thing. The Gundam Cafe is just about imagery and cool scrub structures and all that. And if you're just really into other hobbies, music, guitars, cosplay, dolls, airsoft, video games, particularly vintage, uh, just have a general wander around. The Tokyo hobby scene is divided between the commercial outlet of Akihabara, Gundam Front in Odaiba and all the chains of electrical or outlet stores with pretty much identical stock much like your soft maps and big camera. For a closer feel of uh, 
the true secondhand and artistic side of the Tokyo scene is Nagano Broadway, which can be found within half an hour to one hour via the train from central Tokyo. It's a fairly rundown shopping center and there's nothing to signify it being special from the train station besides walking straight among standardized uh, stores and restaurants until you're met with a Mandarake sign. A Mandarake is a chain of secondhand stalls that are all over Japan and the first one was located in this spot. You'll find quite a few closed roller shutter doors for these booths. About a third of them open conducting businesses in specialized ways such as rentable glass cases. If you wish to buy something you write down the name of the case and the item you wish to buy and the clerk will pull it out and sell it to you for a monthly fee and a percentage of whatever is sold. Uh, a Japanese citizen or permanent resident can also hire them. Many other stores just outright buy stuff or stuff in bulk and display it in their uh, little uh, booths specializing in all sorts of uh, genres of uh, pop culture and the hobby from comics, manga, shows, all the way to the really weird stuff like dolls, animated cells and objects and merchandise from pop groups. The complex on the second half where the, all the second-hand stores are is three stories. The, the bottom is your general toys, middle is your uh, comic and pop culture stuff, books, all that sort of thing. The third floor is where it gets really special and there's a few hobby stores around there, again mostly second-hand from very cheap general Gundam merchandise to a large selection of garage kits, older, rarer, out of production kits, uh, military kits, sci-fis, stuff from the 60s and uh, 70s in a lovely dressed out shop with an archway, a, a train outlet, aftermarket cover kits for your Gundam stuff as well as at the uh, far end you'll see a red uh, Tory Gate shrine where the treasures of uh, the Mandarake collection and the high-end uh, products are sold at tin toys from the 50s, 60s and one-off very specialty items. Some of them are on display sell for thousands of uh, dollars and have a significant or historical uh, benefit of being one of the last surviving high-quality examples. You will find it's not very commercialized. All the businesses there are privately owned or the original outlets are from Mandarake. It's uh, very uh, cluttered. There's a rustic aesthetic to it. And some of the shops are just outright uh, cluttered with too much stock still being appraised, sorted and displayed. I suppose when they have uh, too much, a lot of it's shipped out to uh, the other Mandarakes and when they get stuff, they come back for appraisal. Uh, quite a few uh, offices as well as points where you can see that they dispatch items for uh, shipping or when sold on the net or uh, looked at. Highly recommend it. You'll see some finished models on display in the uh, glass hireable cabinets which are of a very high quality. I always love to visit this and you don't have a lot of scalpers or um, international tourists buying and clearing everything out. So anything that's not uh, collectible or of high value to the Japanese, you can buy super, super cheap. When traveling Japan and you really wish to get that sense of culture and where the heart of the country is. Regional areas, you're going to get all sorts of interesting taste of uh, food and sites, all easily interconnected with uh, the public transport. But my personal opinion, the real soul is in Kansai of Osaka and Kyoto. You're going to get uh, more temples, kinder hearted and uh, slower tempered locals and in the hobby scene especially you're going to see more personalized models on display in uh, shops including the large department stores as well as larger headquarters for businesses such as uh, Volks, Code Bikia, that sort of thing. This is where I find the best projects and models to uh, build in that's not 
event orientated that you'll only find in uh, Tokyo and have quite a bit of uh, inspiration drawn from these uh, displays uh, visiting and purchasing goods from these stores that are less likely to be raided from uh, tourists and uh, mass quantity of rushed locals. You will also find accommodation, transport, especially food at a higher quality, larger space and far more affordable. I stayed in an area called uh, Shin Imamiya. It's a bit of a disadvantaged area and older neighbourhood from past eras, but the people uh, keep their head up and uh, are more than uh, welcoming of uh, anyone from uh, creed, colour or interest. Around an rundown arcade in Shin Imamiya and exploring for some cheap eats and a post office to withdraw money, I found one of the most charming mum and pop individual hobby shops on the side with the owner displaying his uh, proudly owned built kits in the window, some of them for sale and inside a various uh, display of built and work in progress projects by his customers with a tiny corner that I would assume people would sit and assemble things as talking to him. His shop uh, spreads out to a back room I couldn't quite see which was his own personal uh, workspace, collection and back stock. The shop didn't have too much besides what was immediately popular and items that may be uh, easy for locals to get into. I'd assume a lot of the stuff he would sell would be pre-orders or special orders. The centre would have some supplies and a lot of uh, snacks, chocolates, uh, candy, uh, that sort of thing, like the traditional toy shops in regional areas that would focus on anything a child with a small amount of uh, pocket money could pick up for immediate amusement like a 200 yen basic military kit or an SD Gundam. I found the experience to be very very charming and probably about 10% more overpriced than the standard Yodabashi. Uh, regardless, uh, the mantra of support local rings in my ears where it would be easily accessible to go there rather than catching public transport to a major hub. If you depart from the correct exit at Osaka Station, you'll be met with familiar architecture that is a Yodabashi camera, a little bigger than you may be familiar with, an arcade underneath with all sorts of uh, cafes and uh, interesting aesthetics. One of the higher floors, again, just like Akihabara, you'll find uh, the hobby section, and you'll notice immediately that it's much wider and more consuming yet slightly blends in with the uh, toy and other recreational areas. It's also far better laid out and organised in different genres and subgenres with a fair amount of time required to explore. Where Akihabara focuses more on gunpla and uh, anime assorted goods, Osaka has more to offer for scale modelers and hobbyists of uh, different uh, interests, particularly the trains, the military and the car sections with their own areas of glass cabinets and shelving with entire catalogues of uh, manufactured uh, models from the appropriate brands of every type of uh, kit that can be possibly purchased at a fairly intermediate and standard rate and within those aisles you'll also come across any additional products that you can upsell such as aftermarket parts, accessories, diorama components, all that sort of thing. You'll also find uh, higher end quality uh, tools, parts, products in the glass cabinets that you can ask for assistance to be uh, pulled out and demonstrated or uh, sold to you and heading around to the paint and tool section you'll find almost every catalogue part and component of our tool that would be required for the hobby across all brands so there'll be multiple types of knives, brushes, airbrushes all that sort of thing. You can practically feed your entire hobby from this one location and this uh, one location only. If uh, gunplay and the mecha side of uh, stuff is your cup of tea 
the area is uh, sizable with uh, display kits and small plastic displays above the retail store showing you what the model or item looks together snapped and even demonstrations of the uh, coloured runners. In the centre you'll have uh, large pallets that are dropped off the latest products that hit the market that you can pick up and go straight to the uh, catch register with uh, all the publication, books, guides, DVDs, all that sort of thing and even more specialty goods behind the counter. In the uh, fringes of the area you'll also find stranger products such as pigments for resin, casting supplies, RC stuff, the four wheel drive Tamir trucks, all that sort of thing that just has to do with building, gluing, painting, all that sort of thing that we wouldn't even sometimes consider what would be localised in our hobby like creating small samples of uh, plastic foods. It's uh, definitely uh, worth checking out but I would save uh, buying stuff from here last until you've uh, checked out some second hand and uh, specialty stores like uh, Mandarake and Dead Den Town. For a fantastic and one of the best Mandarake experiences in Osaka and second hand kits in general, very close to Osaka Station is a series of uh, arcade archways very famous for uh, restaurants, a lot of them are touristy traps with uh, pachinko bars and that sort of thing. Uh, quite a bit to visually see. If you keep heading uh, down and you find a giant tenga uh, cup of a few sushi restaurants and whatnot, to your left there's uh, two door entryways with a large mandarake sign and some uh, decorations. You'll be heading downwards via escalator or stairs where you're met with two massive rooms. Uh, one with a giant mammoth and it's uh, full of uh, comics, reading material, pop culture. And a second room adjacent by a small stairway to uh, the toy room which has glass cabinets all over the place and uh, the outer rim. Very close uh, quarters, it's uh, very similar to the Shibuya store. Just much larger and this one is uh, very well stocked out with uh, kits both uh, vintage second hand and uh, resin. You will find some cheaper kits here rather than uh, other places and it's the place where many of the uh, locals not heading to Denden Town will uh, check out and do their shopping once they're in Osaka proper. You'll see a stage with uh, a bit of uh, the display of uh, costumes and uh, whatnot. Quite a bit of activity. It has a massive turnover. I would find that in the glass cabinets you'll find a specialty in Zoids and plastic kits over uh, garage kits or resin. For anybody holidaying and travelling across Japan, even for a very quick flyby few day occurrence, Kyoto is always a must. And that is especially if you are interested in history aspect of uh, the society as well as the pop culture aspect. Once you've uh, met in Kyoto Station, if you're based out in Osaka, transportation can range anywhere between uh, 20 minutes to uh, one hour in between. Very easy to and cheap to travel, so there's no excuse to check it out. And outside your normal touristy trap areas such as uh, temples, shrines, historical sites, there are quite a few uh, aspects to check out regarding the hobby scene. Some of them may not be as obvious or well placed as in Tokyo or Osaka and requires a little bit of research. First, if you are staying for about a week or quite a while, doing previous uh, research where you're staying and checking out where all the mama pop or small independent shops around the place is quite a treat. Some of them are fairly old, trading uh, kits all the way back from the 90s and 80s and sitting on quite a bit of uh, recycled dead stock from that period. Sometimes still at the price 
they were selling back then and that can be quite a treat to uh, wander across it somewhere in the uh, back box or suburbs on the uh, outer edges and uh, scoring something that is quite nice. Once you start going into the heart of uh, the restaurant and touristy scene, there's a series of arcades called uh, Shinku Yogoku, which I probably most likely mispronounce. It's interlocking arcades with uh, various uh, shops, restaurants, and one stretch that's uh, nothing but fresh food being sampled out. Some of them can be uh, very expensive. Uh, other strange things like our cafes and claw game machine houses. Among a couple of these arcades you will find uh, various of uh, second hand and pop culture shops, crane shops, as well as those uh, stores with uh, the glass display cabinets that you can uh, hire and choose what item in there. It's been uh, referenced a few times in this uh, video. I probably should definitely mention that uh, it's sort of like a real life eBay. Individuals rent these uh, cabinets and they're responsible for pricing it as well as a cut being taken by the store displaying it. One thing should be noted that the actual prices of the item is a bad reference or indication of their value if they are to be resold or you don't wish to have it anymore. Most of the time sorting for a profit and they're way too expensive and you can find the same item elsewhere unless uh, very rare and sometimes it's being cleared very cheaply and worth grabbing. I always love to have a look as people who finish models and wish to uh, sell it do display it there and it's good to uh, have a look and uh, request permission to take a photo. Among some of these uh, second-hand uh, shops, there's one or two fairly large ones around the uh, Munga and uh, Dojin reselling stores that are multiple levels, selling uh, bagged pre-opened uh, toys, as well as a small collection of uh, your standard uh, gunpla or military model kits and even built kits. These places will have a corner for glass cabinet displaying garage kits where a few rare finds uh, can be found. There are a few animation uh, studios and museums around in uh, Kyoto so there's definitely a pop culture scene but it's uh, far more closeted and not in your face like uh, Akihabara. In that regard you can find stuff but the true gem and uh, strength of Kyoto is the military scene and the train scene. Due to the hills and uh, forests around, a lot of people like to play survival games or role play, dress up, cosplay in military outfits. So you'll find some surplus military stores uh, selling BB guns and that sort of thing. It's good to look for a reference or buy apparel from uh, those uh, sort of places or even check out if they're having a game or tournament if you're into the military side of things. Many stores in the arcade and all around Kyoto that focuses on trains will have large elaborate beautifully built out layouts as well as selling in a manner of every type of Japanese train model and foreign plus diorama supplies basing all that. In some of these spaces if you're very fluent in Japanese you can actually rent, bring your own uh, train model or buy one and run it around these uh, beautiful layouts, even uh, film it. If you're a train hobbyist and wish to dump quite a significant amount of uh, money this is uh, definitely the area that's right up your alley making sure that you research where these appropriate locations are. Again, they're not super easy to find. And lastly, being a very historical place that does uh, love military modeling, a lot of the shops will have rarer, hard to get uh, Japanese manufactured as well as foreign military kits. Going back to the station at the end of the day is uh, time to look at Yodabashi camera, very similar to Osaka absolutely massive, far superior to Tokyo in uh, every way with a larger section in uh, tools, much bigger one in trains, almost everything that's uh, offered on the uh, open current market or circulation and a sizable military section. The Gundams are a bit uh, dwarfed, though 
enough of the current models can be bought. They do have a sizable non-gunpla science fiction and anime modeling category where you can pick up your yeah, Macrosses and all other subject matters by Kota Bakir and other brands. It is uh, very much worthwhile uh, going through that and finding a subject that you may not be too familiar with and taking home something that is not in circulation in your own country online or outside of your knowledge even. I have to do mention that the Yodobashi in Kyoto does have a superior display of painted, customized and finished models to the other Yodobashis that actually rival the displays of uh, Volks in Osaka, Kobe and Tokyo. Uh, some very talented modelers must work at that particular branch. Once in Osaka, the JR is run like a loop, which is easy to look at as a map. And opposite Osaka Station, about 20 minutes around, is Shinomamiya, near the old Osaka Tower. An excellent uh, museum on Japanese old confectionaries like Pocky and whatnot. Going down that series of uh, arcades and uh, shops, you'll uh, reach Nipponbashi, also known as Denden Town. A little tricky to access, but completely worthwhile. It's approximately a quarter or slightly less the size of Akihabara, but nowhere near as commercialized as the larger stores are nearer Osaka Station. My personal opinion, this is the best uh, hobby location to shop outside of the Kyoto and Osaka Yodabashi camera and the Mandarake over there. Breaking through down the main street and the sub streets, the Joshin Super Kids Land is divided between two buildings. One very large one claiming to be the largest site and single store in all of Japan selling figurative models and figurative toys. The display of items on the multiple floor shopping complex is absolutely immense. The range is amazing and it's just a highlight for many people who visit the country to uh, shop there with a mix of uh, being a Yadabashi outlet and a Volks outlet entire floor dedicated to Tamiya, military modeling, RC, trains, including all sorts of kits uh, imported from China and Europe. You'll find a massive range of uh, items, almost like trolling through uh, the Radio Kankai building in Akihabara. There is its sister building a little further down with a largish print of an RX-78 Gundam and Zaku on the side of the building. This one is two stories tall and very famous for traveling up an escalator to be met with a one-to-one -one scale Gundam hand crashing through a wall. Uh, this one is more of a specialty shop on the top floor completely dedicated to Gundam with some specialty limited stock on apparel coffee cans and merchandise. It has a fantastic display of uh, built kits and a range of assortment of uh, kits in and out of production including all sorts of uh, goodies, paints, aftermarket bits, building supplies, stuff to mill, build convincing dioramas as well as executions and examples of how to do it yourself. The floor underneath uh, covers all other anime type of uh, models from Bandai as well as other brands like Kota Bakir and whatnot. Going across the road is uh, the Super Volks building, which is a multi-story complex, a lot like the Joshin. Unfortunately, this time during my visit, it was partially closed, a lot of stock are liquidated and its fantastic displays dismantled. I think they're either relocating or completely refitting the building, though traditionally from previous uh, visits, the each room is dedicated or floor is dedicated to a genre of uh, modeling, uh, being resin garage kits, anime military, trains, figurative cars and civil subjects, ships, 
you'd have all these display cabinets around the room with very high-end built models and some that were specially built for uh, magazine display by professionals and celebrities. You can easily spend hours in this building just trawling through and looking at a whole array of fantastic projects and dioramas accompanied with recommended uh, paints and hobby supplies. The main floor for paints and tools will have a full range of colors from every type Paint from polyurethane, not so common in Japan, to your lacquers, acrylics, enamels. From all around the world, different manufacturers, Spain, England, Italy, Humbrol, Korea, the whole kit and caboodle. There is absolutely nothing that's out of your reach for uh, the super keen modeler that has a preference. The overseas stuff is double to triple the price and can be very pricey though pre-sourced. Near that would be Jungle which is the competitor to Mandarake. They only deal in toys and model kits. The complex is two levels. On the uh, top level you will find a mass amount of model kits. Your standard uh, Gunpla is far cheaper than half price. Box dented, damaged or whatnot, and normally overflow stock I would imagine partially built kits though a lot of limited event specials p bandai that sort of thing and a section for a lot of 70s 80s 90s uh, vintage kits from brands long gone or out of production in the glass cabinets you'll have the super rare stuff in all sorts of conditions and in the bottom floor garage kits including bins of sorted unknown kits that are not well sorted going very very cheap there's uh, something to find uh, throughout there there is a plamo cafe that recently opened i noticed uh, near the central bit in the back streets didn't have a chance to explore that due to a lack of uh, japanese soft map and bit camera has a small presence very very cheap though limited stock it looks like it's been cleared out from a sale or something. A yellow submarine has an appearance with a few interesting rarer built kits and some parts compared to the mediocre stock that I saw in Tokyo with an array of junk shops on either side of the main street. I have noticed uh, near the Animate Melon Books end some of those shops seem to be a bit shady uh, the second hand goods were heavily overpriced and a friend that I was traveling with for a few days was attempted uh, ripped off with a one piece figure he tried to buy from a glass cabinet I've never experienced this in a Japanese uh, sense of customer service though he was able to communicate back in Japanese I found the best junk shops for kits particularly trains and military were on the side of the road with jungle and near volks i've always bought a few good things around uh, that area directly opposite from joshrin and if you explore the alleys in between the main street and secondary street and turn a few corners where you get your dumpsters and things just don't seem like should even be there You'll find some small nook crannies, walkways that will lead you to these near empty shops with extremely cheap prices and turning over of uh, dead stock from larger stores. I did manage to uh, pick up some specialty items that were for next to nothing. Escaping all of that after two weeks everything has to come to an end and it's time to travel home packed as much as i can in my luggage and headed off to kansai airport a lot of the other major airports in japan are very similar and in the gift shop duty free area i happen to find another hobby shop to have a look at which is probably good for people laying over but entering the country or leaving i can't imagine they'll get a lot of business Having a little peek in there besides the very obvious major manufacturers including uh, Bandai and Gundam, they had a few exclusives there that you cannot acquire anywhere else easily due to being re-sculpted online or 
collected immediately. I had uh, no space in my carry-on to grab one or two of those uh, cheeky pickups, but if you're stopping off in any Japanese airport, it's good to be aware of, though the prices are fairly steeped. Being a big fan of uh, Family Mart uh, fried chicken, I was able to snack on that uh, just before boarding on my way to the Philippines. A, a nice send-off. If you were to uh, holiday across Japan, uh, go on a rail pass or whatever you need to do, and visit multiple cities, and you're doing stuff in between eating as well as doing all the touristy stuff, looking at the uh, cultural or historical landmarks, there will be a small sub hobby electric suburb city block around the major train stations. In my previous trips and uh, vlogged in very old videos, Kobe, Hiroshima, uh, Kumimoto, I've uh, found some very charming independent shops and sometimes the odd Mandarake or Volks doesn't matter where you are you will trip over a hobby shop the more regional you go especially if they do secondhand stuff the cooler stuff you're very much likely to come across and collect or sell on as a treasure and it's always worth checking out and having a wonder for a few to minutes. wrap up the video the haul the bits and pieces I've uh, bought for myself not necessarily to resell it's all been sorted packed away and starting to uh, move not a lot of model kits to save space however I did get uh, quite a bit of uh, limited and rare paint even uh, tricky to find online most of these from Volks wanted to try the flat clear by uh, Gaia Note all of their special edition flats mostly for the frame arm girls and the Hatsune Miku uh, hair color and dress color which I'm probably going to be doing another bust somewhere down the road uh, the right hair looks about right pastely blue green a few colours of uh, burnt iron, which no hobby shop in my city happens to have it in stock for some reason. So this should last me about a year. I like it for the inner frames, weapons, tank tracks, that sort of thing. And the girls and puns are basic colours to colour in tanks. I'm just a sucker of uh, getting their products like uh, the glues and whatnot. Might not use it a lot except for one or two 70 second projects, but it'll sit in my collection with a haro ball. The haro ball I've uh, started and it's in its uh, primer stage. It's the Zaccarello variant. During the trip I also built the Bandai 120F Kobu. Painted, reviewed everything in my hotel room. When I finished exploring for the day, had a few drinks, a beer, and uh, just about to go to bed. So it was, it was nice to tinkle for model after being inspired, looking at all the displays and whatnot. Fantastic model with a completely, uh, can't crack it open at the moment, Inter uh, detailed interior. Uh, you'll see that in the review. Bought a ball from a Gachapon... Uh, ball machine in Akihabara and we'll build that at some point. I uh, got the footage of uh, putting the money in it uh, rolling out. In the way of uh, reviews of uh, hobby, hobby products going to demonstrate the use and effectiveness of the Tamir polyester putty. I bought the nice big quantity. God hand sanding sponges fairly effective product uh, that's just a drill bit uh, this is the wave reaming tool I've seen a demonstration used by Mr. Kawaguchi in quick modifications and I was uh, very impressed uh, this is carried by Hobby Co but every time I've tried they've been out of stock so I'm super glad to get my hands on this I can do a demonstration in the same breath I also saw Kawaguchi carry this in his toolkit. It's a uh, nipper cutters, the shape of nail clippers. I found that to be pretty funny, pretty cheap. Got it to just try it out and keep it as a troll. 
Uh, last three items are uh, kits, the ATM6, bought it very cheap and just chucked it in my carry-on uh, luggage in the front pocket of uh, the bag. Uh, also put a couple of Filipino cigars in there that I didn't finish smoking when I was overseas. Uh, Deaf Army parts, I bought the Deaf Army for about 700 yen in Osaka and the night before I flew out I cut each pit off the runner and cleaned it to stay up all night so I could sleep on the flight and not be uh, jet lagged once I came home. Didn't work out too well but I've got a near prepped kit and the best one, the biggest treasure of the whole trip is uh, Tanya the Evil uh, Garage Kit which was bought from Wonder Festival with the official seal. This is one of my all-time favorite uh, anime, even though it has uh, recently come out. And merchandise is not very common in the way of uh, detailed kits, figures, anything. Being a subject of World War I meets uh, magic, having a model kit opposed to a toy is very appropriate. And I will thoroughly enjoy building, documenting and sharing this on the channel. I'd like to have an attempt at it a lot sooner rather than later being probably the only recorded example on YouTube. This is uh, about all that I got, which is a nice amount of stuff. Thank you very much for watching. As always, until next time, stay tuned for further content and we'll catch you guys next time. Stay tuned for the Wonder Festival video, the video on uh, Gundam Front. It's going to be a lot more than just the unicorn display, looking at all the intricate uh, displays in the interior, including the Gunpla Builders World Cup, as well as a build review of the Kobu and use of the sanding sponges. Catch you guys next time.